Hello my friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today's a very fun, exciting afternoon uh, because we are going to hook up the water tank to the tractor for the first time and get this bad boy in use. So if you remember a couple of days ago, I showed you my new quote toy, farm toy that we decided to get. We've been looking at this for a while now and it is a hundred gallon watering tank. So it will hold both clear water and fertilizer water. We are going to hook it up to the tractor. It is PTO powered. Some people were asking why we just didn't get one that would go like in the back of the Polaris or the Kubota. Well, you still have to have a battery to pump the water and the tractor is one of our least used vehicles so we can keep the tank in there uh, or on the tractor rather. And yeah, so that's, that's the route we went, right, Jer? Yes, he says. All right, so he is the, uh, the master tractor man. And uh, so we're gonna just go ahead and get this thing. He's gonna get this thing hooked up and then we're gonna play with it and see exactly how it works. And we'll let you know, it's very exciting. So we got it hooked on. Uh, Jir knows how this whole system works, which is good because I am learning. Um, so yeah, so it's all hooked on. The PTO was hooked on. We did a little test run to turn the PTO on and uh, <laughs> everything stayed in place. So that is really good. So now what we're going to do, this is just going to be kind of our uh, inaugural run, right? So we're not going to fill up the whole 100 gallons today. We're thinking about just halfway 50 gallons. Get, go ahead and get some fertilizer in there because it is later in the day and the sun is out. And uh, yeah, I don't know how long it's going to take to go through 100 gallons of fertilizer water. And that is the thing too with this tank is that we want to empty it with the fertilizer water every time. We don't want fertilizer sitting in all of the hoses and the pumps and all the different parts because if you leave it for too long it can start to corrode your um, all your machinery so we will fill it up empty it out and then go ahead and fill it with clean fresh water and then I can go around and water shrubs that don't tip, you know need the liquid fertilizer if it has a little bit in there it's okay but that's a great way for us to flush out this system keep everything working well and keeping it happy um, somebody had said something about yeah don't leave it sitting outside with water in it obviously not because it is so incredibly hot we're getting ready to now today is not that hot i mean it's warm but it's not like crazy hot um, but later on in the week it's going to get back up to 100 and the upper 90s so yes so we will empty this even if it has fresh water in it every single time and we will park it in a tractor shed to keep all of this out from the damaging UV light rays because over time it will certainly um, have its fair share of take its toll on the equipment. So we're just going to get a hose and hook it up, get some fertilizer and get this baby going. Okay, my friends. So we, <laughs> we took a little time out on the uh, filming part because Jerry said, let's figure out, let's make sure we know how this thing works before we're, we're filming it. Um, it took us a hot minute to realize exactly how to work, but it turns out we, I think we just had to prime the pump. Yeah. So we had to prime the pump. As soon as Jerry started disconnecting and reconnecting some water hoses, then she started spraying like a beauty. So, all right, you're the technical guy. So let's just walk through a little bit. Like what should the people know about this? 
Well, I mean, I mean, if you have a tractor and you have a PTO, the number one thing is if you're going to buy one of these is to make sure that you're getting a pump that is rated for nitrogen. Ah. Yeah. Pump rated for nitrogen because that's, I mean, that's primarily, well, that is what we're using, yeah, and water. Yeah, do other chemicals and those kind of things, but there are cheaper pumps out there, but they will not last long. Okay. So rated for nitrogen, um, 100 gallons. What we're doing for simplicity's sake today is yes. we are running water, the fertilizer water from the fertigation system. Because yeah, that it just it gives us a correct uh, parts per million that we want to put into the landscape, which is not anything that you're going to use as a homeowner. This is no. for, in the greenhouse, but we'll come up with a measurement for like so many cups, cups or whatever for a 50 gallon. <laughs> right we so we just this is the fastest and the easiest way to get fertilizer water in the tank today is just to run the hoses connected to the fertigation system in the greenhouse so when we fertilize the annuals in the greenhouse this is the ratio the exact ratio we use so these plants are very much used to this ratio um, because we do have to figure out once we have that dry water soluble fertilizer just like whether it's proven winners or jacks or whoever We've got to know how many scoops, how many cups to make for a 50 gallon tank or a 100 gallon tank. Well, you tank. know, like the proven winners thing, what is that? A scoop per what? It's yeah. a scoop per gallon. Yeah, so it would be 50 scoops. Right, so it would be 50 scoops. How for many? 50 gallons. For 50 gallons. But then we got to do the measurements of how many yeah. scoops. I guess I, that's a tablespoon, so I could say how many tablespoons are in a cup. Yeah. Anyway, we got to do some math. But so anyway, there you go. There you go. Here. Okay. So it has the reel. It, the reel does have a lock on it, so that's great. So, and it's. Um, we have two wands. Yes. We have those really high pressure spray wand, and then this is the Let's Go Lawn, you know, so it'll have like a little right. more of a shower you know type of spray but when the tractor was and the tractor's not on so that's just residual pressure yes, yes. um but when the tractor is on i mean it it sprays oh, yeah, it's good but we can turn the pressure down right and it would be less of a force mm -hmm. yeah so if i find that it's too pressured i could just turn down my right yeah so i like that i like that to be able to hook up here so. mm. All right, so what we're gonna do is just finish getting this. We're only gonna put 50 gallons in it today. And um, then I think we're gonna go down and fertilize the two entrance beds along the creek that have the sun patients in it and the coleus and grasses and things. Uh, that's what we're gonna tackle first. So we'll take you along for the ride on that. we got everything going super easy y'all so we just have it we did have to turn down the pressure so I can just come in here and I can walk and I can hit at the base of the plants and just get everybody nice and happy and watered in with all of the yummy fertilizer so as you can see this bed is really doing very nicely um, the only fertilizer that this bed has had is the initial um, slow release fertilizer that we gave it and then remember it is on really good irrigation and everybody is very happy in here it took a little bit of a hit when we very first um, planted it because you know the plants were new getting them established it was it was a little bit we had to do a little bit of hand watering with them um, but the irrigation system is working great you can tell from like the purple fountain grasses man they are happy and doing really well um, and then of course we have coming down through here i want to show you is the um, quick fire fabs um, i am not going to fertilize those with fertilizer water because those are hydrangeas and they do not want this liquid fertilizer but look right here look how happy the grasses are so the grass can take the liquid fertilizer right so it can take that good food, but I'm not going to use this on my shrubs, especially my hydrangeas. They have enough food. They're very happy. And then we move on down this way. All right. Uh, old Jer wanted to take 
take, take the wand for a round or two. So he is watering right now for me. Um, but I wanted to give you an update on how these plants are doing and just kind of recap of what the plants are that we have in this flower bed because they are doing fantastic. So as we turn around right here, um, in this bed, we did two kinds of coleus. We'll start with that. So this is lime thyme, lime thyme, of course, gorgeous green on it. At the bottom, we have the silver bullet. This is an artemisia. Um, it's doing really well. Of course, um, the good old Prince Tut, love this grass. It is the annual of the year, fun, nice green on it. And then we have our beloved purple fountain grass. And this is how I know that they are doing just fine on the irrigation because they are nice and lush and look at those beautiful plumes on it doing really well here comes my personal gardener going in there giving them a little bit of food it's awesome um, and then we had the alyssum jerry this was snow princess it's either snow, yeah, princess. snow princess this was snow princess because snow princess um, is the most vigorous so it is in here of course, the newly noir coleus, this is new for this year. Nice, beautiful, dark, dark green, uh, not green, look at me. Um, oh, oh, you just blew her off. <laughs> I was gonna show a ladybug, she got moved a little bit. Um, dark, just almost like a black foliage on it. So we have that going down through there. And then kind of the star of the show as far as flower power are the Sun Patience. This is Sun Patience Compact Purple. And they are doing well you can see that we have some flowers we do have some maybe that are a little bit smaller than others this is where the food is really going to help them um, the food is going to just give them a great shot it's that great shot in the arm and get them going nice and happy um, we did have almost right after we did plant these two beds we had a crazy rain that was just what we call a gully washer, right? I mean, it came through here and it moved a lot of the covering that we had, the compost and the mulch. We just haven't had time to get back in here and cover it up because where you can see irrigation lines now before you couldn't see them. Um, so when time allows, we need to get back in here and fix that. But man, oh man, overall, I am really happy with how this bed is looking because you see great pops of color. You can see that the silver bullet is that beautiful kind of that silver color um, when it's dry and then when it's wet, it kind of turns green. But man, everybody is doing great in here as is the companion bed that is just right here. We will get that fertilized here in just a minute. Alrighty, my friends, uh, the fertilizing for today was a quite a success. We really did go through 50 gallons on those two beds. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see uh, how much fertilizer we go through. And obviously there's a, a big learning curve, right? As you try to figure out 
how much to spray and all, all those good things. But it was a great success, don't you think? Yeah, it worked great. Once we got it figured out. Yep. <laughs> Which is always the case with everything. It is. The first one, you know, is the first time is always the hardest. And that's why I'm blessed to have this man because he can figure it out. He's persistent. He figured it out. Uh, my brain doesn't work that way. Praise the Lord, his does. And so we make a good team. So what we're going to do now is um, just go fill it up. I'm probably going to fill it up with at least 50 gallons of fresh water because the entrance beds at the gate are really dry and they just need some good water. So what I'll do is I'll probably start with like the caladiums and the surefires and then I'll go on to my shrubs but it's super dry up there so i can easily dump 50 gallons of water on that and they will be very happy um, of course we'll keep you updated on as how we use this and but so far man yeah it's a game changer great. yep game changer all right y'all have a great day as always thanks so much for going to the creek side we'll see you in the next video bye friends